Hello, photographers. In today's video, let's talk about how to do a time blend. My name is Austin James Jackson, professional landscape photographer based here in Southern Utah. I want to show you guys one of the most dirty tricks that pro photographers are using today in their images. Now, not everyone's doing this, but a lot of people are, where they're doing a time blend of you know, a lot of times it's images that are taken 10 or 15 minutes apart to highlight the best conditions. A lot of times for us landscape photographers, that's going to look like a sunset or a sunrise where maybe like for a sunset, let's say the lights, the very last light is hitting the landscape. You capture that, you leave your tripod in the same spot. You capture another image 15 minutes later where the clouds are just fantastic. Um, and so by being able to combine these two images, you can create really visually compelling images that are going to look great. Additionally, you'll see in this example, I'm actually shooting at the ocean. So I'm capturing multiple images where not only is the light good, but I'm capturing, trying to capture the right wave in the right area and just combining everything together. So I'm going to show you hopefully how to combine this seamlessly for yourself. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how to do it in the field as well as we work through the images. Let's go ahead and jump into Lightroom Classic. I've got the images um, loaded in here, but we're going to be doing this in Photoshop. And you can see this is kind of the final image. This is where we are going. Now I'm not going to do the whole edit. I'm just going to show you how to do the blend to get to the base image. But this is the final edit of the image here. I've got, you can see I've got this nice sunset. I've got this nice light on the rocks. Um, but what you wouldn't know unless you were there is when I look at this, when the there's light on the rocks, when I'm capturing this in the field, um, the problem is that the clouds are boring. Instead, it was, you can see this was 9.52 p.m. This was 10.08, so that's, you know, what, 16 minutes or so, um, if my math is not crazy. Um, and you can see the clouds are a lot better 16 minutes later, but now we don't have good action going on in the waves. This light is pretty marginal. So we wanna combine all these images together. So first things first, I wanna make sure my images don't really have any edits on them. They can have um, the lens corrections done. If they do though, you wanna make sure all of them have lens corrections done, which they do now. Um, additionally, you wanna make sure that the white balance and tint is the same, especially on the foreground images here. So I'm at 5950 and plus 15, 5950 plus 15, 5950 plus 15. Now this one you could adjust as well, but the problem is because the light had changed so much, your like 5950 plus 15 is going to look not the same really. Um, so I'm going to just leave this one where it's at and maybe we'll adjust it later. Um, but we can load these images in and then work from there. The one thing that I do want to do on this image, since this is the only image where I'm just going to be blending the sky, I just want to make this a little bit easier to work with by dropping the highlights and we can increase the shadows just to match a little bit better. I just want to apply a few basic adjustments. Now, I didn't used to do this, but it's just going to make this easier to blend, easier to explain. So once you have that done, you can go ahead and load these into Photoshop. Now, the best way to do that is select all four images or however many images you have. Click on the first image and then hold shift, click on the last image. Now you have everything selected. Now, I always forget where it is in the menu, um, but I think it's edit, it's photo, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. Perfect, I remembered that time just for the video. Now this will load over into Photoshop and then we'll be able to work on it there. All right, now here we are in Photoshop. We're gonna work through this. If you don't know how to use Photoshop, I'm gonna give my shameless plug and tell you I have a full Photoshop course. It is free on YouTube. It's a like a... Um, a playlist, I think it's called. Um, and that walks you through everything you need to know about Photoshop. Um, hopefully I can explain it enough in this video, but I'm not going to cover a ton of stuff in depth. We're going to be using some layer masks and some stuff like that, that I'll uh, briefly gloss over, but I'm not going to talk about it for a long time. So if you want to learn, make sure to check out that playlist. I'll link it here. Um, if you want to completely learn Photoshop from end to out. Now, the first thing that we need to do here is figure out which layers are which. So you know, these three are all foregrounds. This is the background. So we'll call this BG for background. And then these three are foreground. Now, the biggest thing you'll see is the composition changed slightly, which if I remember right, there was like a, maybe a wave that hit me or something and I had to move. So my composition is different. So the first thing we want to do is align all the images. That's super important. So you go shift um, and make sure you're selecting the bottom image, shift and click on the top image, come down to edit go to auto align layers, just do auto. This usually works, I'd say 95 times out of 100. 
and this will automatically align the layers. Good, 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 very good. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. There's a few things in the foreground that are a little bit off. It's the ocean, so like these are all living things. Not this rock, but like this, I guess. Um, but I'm not that concerned about it because everything in this background image is coming from the sky, so it should be fine. So we're going to leave that sky image hidden for now. First thing we want to do is get this foreground blended in. So we need to figure out what we need from each image. Now, when I got back from this shoot, I had like a ton of images, like 50 or 100 or something. And I sorted through and found the images that I wanted to pull something from. So um, I wanted to pull this left side part. Uh, I like the sunlight hitting here and I like this wave from this image. That's probably about it from that image. Um, so we'll go bottom left and you don't have to title yours if you don't want. And then the other two images are these two. And there was a few things that I liked on this top image. I like this right in here on this bottom image. I like most everything else. So we will just go through and blend these together. First thing I want to do this image will be the easiest because I know I just want the bottom left. So I'm going to throw a layer mask on this. I'm going to hold the alt or option button or like on Mac, it's both and put a black layer mask on. Um, that makes it so that this layer, there's nothing that shows through. I'll grab my brush, nice and soft, 0% hardness, a nice and big size, make sure it's on white, 100% opacity. Uh, you can paint with less opacity, but you wanna make sure that everything you're covering is either covered 100% or 0% basically. Now I'll just paint this in. Maybe I make this a little bit smaller. If you wanna see the original layer, you can hold shift and click. So now I can kind of see what's going on over there. I think I want to paint this out. So I switch my brush to black by pushing X. Just paint it out right here. And I'm always looking for seamless breakpoints. So the reason why I wouldn't want to paint like this is because this doesn't look right. But because the this grass or kelp or seaweed or I'm, I'm sure somebody knows what it is, but whatever it is, it's not moving between the two images. So it's a nice break point where I can paint and not have to worry about it. And we'll go in, I want to make this small, just get this right up to the edge like that. We're in here. And same thing, we want to get a good break point. I don't really like that, so let's paint it just like that. And you can see that's what we've painted in down here. Touch up this spot just a little bit. So now we've got that bottom left side is good to go. So now our next layer, uh, we said we wanted this right here. Um, and let's see if there's anything else we want. I like more flow right here is kind of nice. And yeah, we'll start with that. So we'll do the same thing. Black layer mask, hold the alt option button. We will grab our brush, come in here, make this a little bit smaller. Then we'll just paint this in. Now this is where it's going to get kind of tricky because these are going to overlap. And the problem is, like you can see if I expose too much, this is, we don't want the water this high. So that's where you really just have to kind of finesse it with the brush as best as you can. Make this big and soft. Maybe something like that. Again, I'm just looking for it to look seamless. That's looking pretty good. Let's see if there's anything else we want. I think we want this in here. And again, we're going to have that same problem. So we maybe just want to get it at the top. It's not going to look good. Maybe we won't be able to do it on that one. We're kind of a little bit limited, but we can definitely do it here. And I'm going to paint this through the background. I like the background on this image better. Just like that. Now I'm pretty happy with that. So you can see top image, we added that bottom left. Middle image, we added a little bit of this stuff going on. And then bottom image is everything else um, on the base. So we've combined a few of those images. Now we have our sky image. So this is where it's going to get a little bit more difficult. But what we're going to do, I'm going to put this layer on the top and then I'm going to hide it. And there's a couple different ways you can do this. Actually, this will be easier. Let's do it this way. Keep that on the bottom. We're going to put these into a group. So click on one, shift click on the top one, and then it selects all of them. Have a little folder there. 
Then what we're going to do is make a selection of just the sky and then we're going to layer mask it out. So I like to use the quick selection tool. Usually it treats me well. You can see it click. All I did was click and drag and it just snapped and it did a pretty nice job. Some of those trees can be touched up in a second. Um, and we'll touch this up over here. I'll hit the minus. Yeah, and these oceanscapes are really nice because usually there's very high contrast between foreground and sky, so it snaps nicely. Now I'm going to hit the layer mask button. That's going to apply a layer mask exactly opposite of what I want. So I'm going to hit Command I to invert. Now you can see I just have this foreground cut out. Now we have the sky in the background. Um, so there's a few things that we need to do here. First of all, for some reason, every time you use this tool, you always get this white edge. So you can just go in with your brush or whatever, really. Oops, and make sure it's black. I hit X there to change to black. Just paint this out, touch this up. Now there is a little bit of piecing together that we need to do. Um, and you'll notice stuff like this, you know, we've got, it's a little bit high up, um, but it might be okay. The other thing that you can do here is I can actually take this background water into the new image. So if I wanted to do that, I would just use the black paint on this layer mask here. Paint this through. This is just going to make this look a little bit more realistic. Just like that. Now this is where you would really want the two exposures to match because now you'll notice like the water is darker in the back than it is in the front. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. I like to just grab something like a curves, apply it here, and then I'll create a point in the middle so the top doesn't get too tweaked. Just drag this up and match it just a little bit. Bring this back just maybe down there. So I'm just trying to match these. Now you'll notice because we did that little bit of a warp, uh, the image is outside the bounds. So you can either uh, warp this or you can just crop it. I would probably just crop it. I want to keep it in the two to three, sorry, three to two ratio. Um, I'm just going to crop this in. I'm just zooming in here so that I can see the corner. Let's crop this in. And of course, it, it adjusted the ratio, but that's okay. Um, and we'll crop this corner in. Needs to go inwards still, just looking at the bottom. Top is good, just like that. We'll hit enter a couple times. So now we're in pretty good shape. Now you could do some adjustments if you wanted to the sky. But the nice thing about expanding that um, our selection here, you'll see to the rocks, is that the rocks have a lot easier break point of where we can paint that in rather than on the horizon because the horizon is going to be rough to go through, you know, and like paint out that tree perfectly, do everything like that. So just combining the images that way. Um, and really what I'm looking for here, I'm not looking to try and edit the image yet. I want to get it to a neutral spot where it looks like, okay, this could have been the raw file that came from my camera. Um, so maybe the sky would need to be brighter, but I think it honestly looks pretty okay. Now, the other thing you can do is like the opposite of what I did here where I um, I brightened the sky layer because I don't want to brighten it really anymore. I would darken this foreground to make it match. Um, so I could go curves, same thing, hit this down button so it applies to just the group. Now it'll apply to just the foreground. And then just try and match that darkness. You can try and preserve some of the really darks just like that. But now you can see, look at how much better the water matches from this water that's really bright to this one that's really dark. Now they're matching a little bit better. So you really just want to adjust it and get the image to a spot like this where you feel like it's workable. And now what you would do if you're going to edit in Photoshop, I like just merge all visible command option shift and E. Now this is your base layer. You edit it just like you would any other photo. If not, you can just go ahead and save as save this right back in the Lightroom on one wherever you edit your photos, save it right back into there and edit it from there. But that's how you go through and combine your images into one to do a time blend. All right, well, I hope that makes sense. Like I said, if you don't understand Photoshop, do check out that playlist. It'll help you a lot to learn 
um, Photoshop and learn how it works. But otherwise, I hope this was helpful for you to learn how to do a time blend. It's a technique that so many landscape photographers are using, and it's really, really powerful. You can create some sweet looking images this way that do look really realistic um, with great light, great clouds, because generally you don't have those great clouds, uh, those great colorful sunset clouds when you have that great light. So this is the way to overcome that. If you have any questions about this process um, or this video, anything like that, let me know down below in the comments. Love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to help me to continue to grow my channel. Um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for being here. Again, my name is Austin James Jackson. Really appreciate you being here today. We'll see you guys next time.